So I've done something that too many people might say is absolutely crazy. I've switched from the best full frame camera that Canon has to offer to this, the Fuji X-H2S, the new flagship from Fuji with a crop sensor. And in this video, I wanna tell you why this makes sense for me. My name's Wes and I'm a photographer doing portraits and client work, mostly event photography. This is not just for fun. You may not know me for anyone. You may be the first time on my channel. I'm going to outline how the video is going to go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the crazy new BSI stack sensor in the Fuji X-H2S. Then we'll talk about autofocus performance, how Fuji stacks up to Canon. Then we're going to hit that debate of APS-C versus full frame sensor. If you're not a believer, tune in for that. Then we'll talk about the lens lineup because that camera body is only half the battle. And then finally, we'll touch on both video specs and performance before ending with image quality. So BSI, backsided illuminated stack sensor, let's go. All right, so let's start by discussing the X-H2S's standout feature, arguably under-marketed by Fuji. It's a stack sensor, a BSI sense sensor. So your typical cameras have a CMOS sensor, along came BSI, BSI or backside illuminated a sensor. This technology made sensors typically a stop better than the previous non-BSI sensors. And now new to the market, and only a few cameras have this, another step further is the stacked BSI CMOS. So stacking element brings way faster readout speeds. What does this all actually mean? Importantly, the X-H2S gains better low light capabilities due to the BSI. This should mean the X-H2S is as good as at 12,800 ISO as the X-T4 was at 6,400. Then the stacking and fast readout speeds brings crazy 40 frames per second versus the R5's 20 frames per second. The other huge difference is next to no rolling shutter in video, the X-H2S can read the whole sensor in five milliseconds. The Canon R5 reads it all in 50 milliseconds. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Canon R5 is 10 times slower due to the sensor design and the higher megapixels. So now if you're wondering why the R5 doesn't have the BSI or stack sensor, it's because they're expensive. It's a relatively new technology, and this is why the X-H2S is considerably more expensive than the X-H2, even though it's got half the megapixels. Think about it. All right, autofocus. Next up, then autofocus. So this has been the Achilles heel, honestly, of the Fujifilm cameras, uh, cameras and something that Canon, uh, as a brand, are really well known for. You know, the, the R5, the autofocus, is amazing. It doesn't miss at all. And in the past, previous Fujifilm cameras I owned just couldn't keep up. You know, but Fujifilm was promoting the X-H2S as being considerably better. So I took it to a 5K race last fall, and it, too, nailed every single frame. So Fujifilm obviously really upped their game. Question. Is the Fujifilm better than the R5? So probably not, but the gap has closed down so much now that uh, to the point that the, the autofocus doesn't really make a difference for me. For my use case, event photography, it's about a draw. Whereas in the past, this was a huge win for Canon that stopped me from being able to move to Fuji. Uh, now Fuji competes. And if I can get 90, 95% of the shots I would with the Canon, I prefer Fuji. So let's talk about the pros and cons of APS-C versus full frame. So while full frame cameras offer a larger sensor, higher image quality, they often come with a hefty price tag and larger, heavier lenses. So on the other hand, APS-C cameras like the X-H2S uh, offer a more affordable price point and lighter, smaller lenses. And so it's a great choice for those who prioritize portability and ease of use. So full frame sensors are generally considered to be the gold standard in photography because of those large sensors and the resulting higher image quality. But you have to know that APS-C sensors have come a long way since their inception and they can now produce, and this is what I'm standing on, image quality equal to full frame cameras. Yes, the X-H2S equals the image quality of the Canon R5. So every camera has its cons as well. So let's look at the downsides of the X-H2S. All right, so let's talk about those cons. One potential downside is the X-H2S has the smaller sensor size, and that means it might not offer as much depth of field as a full frame camera. 
However, this can be easily remedied with the right techniques and the right lenses, like the 56 f1.2 right here. So I favor the Fuji 56 f1.2, which I might have mentioned already in this video. And uh, just make sure you have more distance behind your space so you can achieve that desirable fall off. So lenses, on to lens cost and selection. So Fujifilm offers a wide range of high quality lenses at a lower price point than Canon and their smaller size and weight makes them more portable and easier to handle on shoot. So I can verify uh, my experience with the Fuji lenses like the 16 to 55 or the 50 to 140 that I rented, a 70 to 200 equivalent. They've been easy to use for an all day event, whereas the Canon 28 to 70 or the 70 to 200 RF are heavier. They make my hands cramp, my back ache in comparison. And those are the classic wedding and all day event photographer woes. I can tell you one standout lens is the Fuji uh, 56 F 1.2, which is compact, lightweight, prime lens, and it's excellent image quality. So, you know, the RF 85, which is the focal length equivalent, is heavier, it's more expensive, and they both get high reviews on photography review sites, but this is praised for its compact size and lightweight design, and it's a great option for on-the-go photography. Perfect for uh, me, an event photographer. So I'm getting good, high-quality glass at a lower price point and easier to manage a weight uh, and bulk. So it's a win, win, win. So this lens is 14 ounces, whereas the RF 85, the focal length equivalent, uh, is three times the weight at 42 ounces, almost two and a half pounds. Let's talk about video though. So next up is video. And first of all, I think it's important to keep your eye on the prize. What are you using your camera for? Don't be fooled by specs. Don't be suckered by features. For example, the Canon R5 has 8K, amazing. What? Video. However, it's got a terrible video codec. So speaking of videos, the X-H2S boasts a 6.2 open gate resolution. So you have the flexibility to crop and edit your footage without sacrificing quality. And don't forget about dynamic range. X-H2S's F-Log2 codec has impressive dynamic range capabilities compared to the Canon C-Log. However, C-Log from Canon is notorious for bogging down my computer. Whereas ProRes uh, codec recorded internally on the X-H2S just sails through Final Cut Pro without a hitch. Also, it can import that video footage in a few seconds, and that means transcoding it as well. Remember, many modern mirrorless cameras, many modern mirrorless cameras, include, including the R5, suffer from rolling shutter, where the image, uh, especially in the corners, gets like wobbly, jello effect. The faster readout uh, from the stack sensor beats those rolling shutter blues. So let's talk about colors. All right, so you've noticed I haven't dis uh, approached this discussion at all from a I'm a Fuji lover, Fuji colors, Fuji sims, Fuji film recipes type of stance. I put that on the back burner. I just wanted to talk about the cameras performance wise, R5 compared to X-H2S. And so uh, once the, I see that they perform the same or near the same, now the X-H2S meeting my technical specs gives me all the colors, the simulations, the recipes that I love, and I'm doubly sold. All right, here's just a few incredible Fuji film recipes. Pacific Blues by Fuji X Weekly, Film Look by Big Negative on YouTube, and Ektachrome by Fuji X Weekly. I love these looks and Canon has nothing similar, no way to compete with these awesome baked in looks for JPEGs. And don't forget, you can get these looks straight onto video. You know, all in all, I'm incredibly impressed with the X-H2S, its capabilities as a versatile and portable camera for photography and videography. If you're someone who values portability, affordability, and high quality results, you know, you should, uh, you should. I recommend you give the X-H2S a try. Uh, so we looked at use, uh, I'm an event photographer and uh, performance, high performance compared to the R5 and now we're at price. Canon R5, $38.99, Fuji X-H2S, $24.99. I favor the Fuji which performs at the highest levels for event photography, portrait photography for my use as a freelance photographer. Thanks for tuning in, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that, let me be the first one
to tell you that. 